Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nandi. I'm a real estate agent in Centurion West with Harcourt. Now in today's video, we'll be discussing the different types of marriage regimes and how they affect your contractual capacity as a natural person. Before we get into the video though, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel and also you may follow me on social media on the handles down below. Let's get into the video. Now in South Africa, any natural person who reaches the age of 18 has the full capacity to act. This simply means that this person has the ability to form and declare his or her will and also to appreciate the consequences of a contract. In South Africa, we have a number of different marriage regimes. We have the civil marriage and we have the civil union and partnership. We also have customary marriages, religious marriages and foreign marriages. Now we have three types of civil marriages. We have in community of property, we have out of community of property and out of community of property with the curo. Now, pe persons married in community of property have limited contractual capacity. This simply means that whenever one spouse uh, falls in or signs a contract, the other spouse must agree or must sign the contract as well. This agreement must be given in writing. That is why this person has limited contractual capacity. So for example, if you're selling a house that forms part of your consolidated assets or estate, you will require written consent from your spouse to enter into this contract. So if you're buying a property, selling your property, and also signing sole mandate, we will require the signature of your spouse if you are married in community of property. This means that you both share the assets and liabilities that form your joint estate. So that is how marriage in community of property works. Now, marriage out of community, people who are married out of community of property do not have limited contractual capacity. These persons have the free will to sign and enter into contracts without the other spouse's consent because their uh, assets are not consol consolidated. So each one has the right to act independently when it comes to his or her own assets and liabilities. And then we have marriage out of community of property with a cural. Persons married in this regime have full contractual capacity. They also don't need uh, written consent from their spouses or also don't the, the other spouse doesn't need to sign any contract uh, the other partner enters into now i will be speaking about customary marriages parties married in this marriage regime can be married in community of property or out of community of prop out of community of property however husbands in this marriage regime are allowed to have more than one spouse but it is important that the marriages are registered for so that the spouses can enforce their legal rights. So if parties in this marriage regime are married in community of property, they will require written consent from the other spouses when entering into a contract. And if they are married out of community of property with or without a cural, these parties have full contractual capacity and don't require any written consent from their spouses. Moving on to foreign marriages. Now, foreign marriages are governed by the country of origin. So basically, this means that they are governed by the laws of the country where the marriage was concluded. Normally, conveyances will require that both spouses sign documentation or contracts. Moving on to religious marriages. Now, sadly, these marriages are currently not recognized in South, in South Africa. So people married in terms of religious marriages are seen to be unmarried and have full contractual capacity and won't require any written consent from their spouses to enter into any contract. Now, thank you for watching the video and I hope that was very informative. I'll also advise that you do research before entering into any contract. I mean, in today's world, we have information at our fingertips. And it is also very important to read the fine print of any contract you enter into. And also ask for a copy after entering into any contract. It's important that you get a copy of any contract that you enter into. Thank you for watching the video. I hope this was helpful. Until, I, until next time. Stay tuned. Also, follow me on social media on the handles down below. Thank you for watching the video. Goodbye.